have a warrant out for the arrest of one cotton-eyed Joe. What's up? I'm Trent Windsor. We're here in search of the perfect shuffle. It's time for another segment of Clearing Out the Archives where I shuffle my music and whichever album pops up, that's the album I review song by song. If a song is more than 50% skippable, if I would skip it more than half the time, I say get rid of it, not worth your time. If a song is less than 50% skippable, if I would listen to it more than half the time, I say it's a worthy addition for your perfect shuffle. Last time we shuffled our music and the album that popped up was Mothership by Dance Gavin Dance. Dance Gavin Dance is a rock band that dabbles in the style of post-hardcore and math rock. They've been around since 2005 and they've released nine studio albums. They're also Warped Tour regulars. While they've always had a dedicated fan base, their seventh album, Mothership, was the first to actually enter the charts, reaching number 13 on the Billboard 200. So what was it about this album that actually made it stand out, that made it commercially viable? Let's find out as I review it song by song. Before we go any further, if you like the videos that I make, please consider subscribing to my channel. We're almost to 100 and it would mean the world to me if we got there. Song number one is called Chucky vs. The Giant Tortoise. Before I really talk about the song in detail, I want to make some generalizations about this album. I want you to know that it took me a good three or four listens before I really understood the sound of this band. There's a lot going on and it's a lot different than a lot of other things that you may have listened to before. They're a unique band with a unique sound and hopefully I can describe it in a way that gets you interested in it because I really enjoyed the sound that they're giving. With this song they really burst through the gates with some incredibly manic energy. The scream vocals are very solid, they're intelligible which as you know I like it when I understand the words. The singing voice for the sung vocals is just like a laser. It's both very smoky and clean at the same time. There's some very nasty guitars and drums in this song. Very complex rhythms and polyrhythms, some interesting meters. But the thing that this band does very well throughout this album, and especially on this song, is that there's a very poppy hook. And that pop element really catches your ear and keeps you coming back for more. You know, the first couple times I listened to this song, I felt like I was getting jerked around. Was it post-hardcore or math rock or pop? And the answer is yes. It's all of those things and all of those elements are really blended very nicely. This song is a solid start to the album. I would say it's 25% skippable. Song number two is called Young Robot. It opens with a nice little flute solo. It's much more understated, and it transforms into a strange kind of hardcore dance track. I think this is the best way I can describe it. It's really weird, the flute combined with the guitar actually oddly remind me of that song, The Hustle. You know, do the hustle. It's honestly not super gripping. I would say this one is 55% skippable. Song number three is called Frozen One. This is a song with one of the more catchy hooks through the album. But despite this, the instrumental aspects of this song are the best part of it. They're all very rhythmically complex and interesting, and the guitar riffs really dance right on top of these heavy drum parts. I would say this one is 35% skippable. Song number four is called Flossy Dicky Bounce. Uh, just to start off, it's named after the woman named Flossy Dicky, who lives to be 110 years old. This is by far the most schizophrenic of all of the songs. The mantra repeated at the beginning of this song is cocaine cringe fest. There's these crazy laser noises, jerky rhythms, very wild transitions in between different parts of the song. I would say this one is the most captivating for me because it almost feels like five songs in one, but somehow they make it work, they make it seem cohesive. I'd say this one is 25% skippable. Song number five is called Deception. In this one, the pop hooks just aren't quite as interesting, and it's just a little bit more even keeled than the rest of the songs that we've heard so far which makes it feel less dynamic. I would say this one is 65% skippable. Song number six is called Inspire the Liars. One of the things I really like about this song is it has some pretty varied guitar tones, great guitar work throughout, and it has a really great hook as well. Just a powerful hook that will stick in your mind. Fun fact, for screamer John Mess, this song contains his favorite lyric, which is simply the word butthole. While this song is a lot more cohesive than a lot of the crazier songs, it doesn't quite jerk you around as much, it still delivers on that manic energy, 
Plus there's a little dance break in the middle, a little hardcore dance break, which is nice. I would say this one is 30% skippable. Song number seven is called Philosopher King. This one has these really solid grooves. You really feel yourself moving right along with the rhythm of the song. It almost feels like waves, it's like an up and down. And yeah, it's so easy to find where to just bang your head. While this one is a little bit more straightforward post-hardcore with a lot more screaming than a lot of the rest of the songs, it's really well done and I will say that it's really very dynamic. There are a lot of different aspects of the song and it does change up so that you're not ever bored. I'd say it's 35% skippable as well. Song number 8 is called Here Comes the Winner. It is a critique of TV shows such as The Voice. You know, it is pretty standard, and I can't really say exactly why. This one just isn't quite as captivating as the other songs in this album. It's not bad by any stretch. It just doesn't quite have the flair that some of the other songs have. I would still say that it's 45% skippable, though. Song number nine is called Exposed. It's a softer love song. It feels a little sappy, uh, a little syrupy. A little uh, maple-y. I'd say it's 70% skippable. Song number 10 is called Betrayed by the Game, and this one still feels pretty ballad-y to me, similar to the previous song. It really just doesn't have any of the bite that some of these songs do have, and that's really made things interesting so far. I'd say this one is 70% skippable. Song number 11 is called Petting Zoo Justice. This is a song of pure rage with nonsensical lyrics about animals fighting. For example, we have the black cat and the brown rat fighting the fruit bat. We also have the green clam and yellow lamb fighting the purple-faced ram. And this is just the beginning. There's lots of animal matchups to be had in this song. It really is more about the music, which is, like I said, pure rage. I would say this one is 40% skippable. Song number 12 is called Chocolate Jackalope. Honestly, it's pretty standard. Once again, I don't have like a ton to say about it. It just isn't necessarily a standout compared to the other songs, but I will still say that it's worth keeping around. I'd say it's 40% skippable. Song number 13 and the final song in the album is called Man of the Year. It's got a pretty slow start, but it has a wild and schizophrenic body. It's about the difficulty of staying faithful on tour. You can definitely feel and hear the strain, the conflicting inner voices. It's an internal struggle. While I like the idea of this song, it gets a little bit too much for me and it just doesn't have that same pop appeal that a lot of these songs do have. I would say this one is 55% skippable. Mathematically, adding everything up, this album as a whole is 45% skippable. Dance Gavin Dance is an incredibly unique band with an incredibly unique sound. They cleverly combine the stylings of a few different genres and make it really fun to listen to. The manic energy and the excitement really make it feel very fresh, and I look forward to keeping this album in rotation. All right, let's shuffle our music, see which album I'll be reviewing next. All right, we're just going to go into our music library here, go to albums, and hit shuffle. All right, it looks like the next album I'll be reviewing is The Miseducation of Lauren Hill by Lauren Hill. If you like what I'm doing here, please go ahead and like this video, subscribe to my channel, turn on notifications, leave a comment below, let me know what you think about Dance, Gavin Dance, and the album Mothership. Also, leave a comment, let me know if there is an album that you'd like to hear me review. I do take requests. Check the description for links to music videos for this album, as well as a link to my podcast, Music Meritocracy, my playlist for Best of 2019, and my playlist for Best of 2020, which is a playlist that I'm updating all the time. I'm Trent Windsor, and this is The Perfect Shuffle. Ooh, that was a sentence. That was a real sentence for the ages.